Welcome everybody to the Shut Your Mouth Lounge, episode number 125. Hey. I'm Alex. We got an Addy. And we got a Pink. Hello there. So, <clears throat> anyone got anything they want to start off today's podcast episode with? Eh. Anything that particularly hits them, like the Fishman bullets. <laughs> <laughs> You see, should we should we explain that now or should we, should we not? You should I, you should it, probably it, explain it. it. It's better if we don't. <laughs> it's it's funnier if we don't. I don't know. So, what we got coming out on the channel right now? I can go ahead and tell you that this coming week we have part one of me and Addy playing through Sengoku Basra four. And we have our desperate attempt at recording Day Day 2K20, which was a disaster. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and it wasn't our fault that time. Tajiri. <laughs> Tajiri. Tajiri, except that for some reason Tajiri's now Minecraft Alex. Go figure. Yeah. All right, Pink, you got anything going up on your channel this week? I do. I've got my remaining four episodes of Stronghold coming out before I have to to record more so i've scheduled that for what is it sunday monday tuesday and wednesday when the last episode will come out then i'll have to record more either wednesday afternoon or thursday morning so i'll have more content because after that my bank is dry all right and addy what you got coming out on your channel this week jack shit all right <laughs> I still haven't haven't the time to actually edit, edit the board review I actually wrote and recorded, so that that's that that still needs to be done. But like most of my time has been taken up by editing the forest. Yeah, <laughs> all seven hours of it. Yeah, and you joke. I, I think the two sessions together have been like the seven or eight hours. Yeah, I am not surprised. Mike, last session, uh, last session, Mike was saying. Uh... Wow, you guys have gotten almost all this done in two sit downs. And I was like, yeah, but those sit downs have been five or six hours. <laughs> oh, man. On the bright side, I think The Forest is probably some of our best content yet. Absolutely. Rest I... in peace, Bobby and Jim. <laughs> oh, no, they, they ain't resting in peace. They're resting in Addy, <laughs> resting in Addy and Goku. <laughs> well, no, they're, they're resting in the soil. They have been assimilated by this point, I, I'd assume. Oh. Um, yeah, probably. Resting in pieces. Resting, resting particles. <laughs> Pop and Jim. Just the fact that... I, I still just love that it was immediately after we got out of the plane. Hey, there's two guys. Quick, let's eat them. <laughs> Oh, shit. I mean, we were hungry. Uh, that, that's true. You'd just eaten mashed potatoes that morning, but you hadn't had anything for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, the thing the thing is, I did, I did eat on, on the plane, but then the freaking, the nutritional value of those mashed potatoes went down considerably because I ate them off of your ass. That's true, that's true. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, the real problem is once we wrap up the forest, because there's a decent chance the next session will be the last one. Like, we've now established a schedule with Mike and Goku. What do we yeah. do now? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the schedule will go to hell sooner or later anyway, because Goku said that he won't be able to uh, go by this schedule, schedule once the quarantine lifts, so... Who knows when quarantine will lift, though? 20, 2050. Yeah, no, no fucking joke. <laughs> like, my, my own family is saying, like, we're not leaving the house until a uh, vaccine comes out. There won't be a vaccine for probably two years. Oh. Happy Amazon. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't think I'll have anything coming on my channel this week. Though, if I get the fucking urge to record something with Total War Warhammer or Dawn of War, then I will, you know. It happens. 
All right, Pink. What have you been doing this week, man? All right. So, what have I been doing this week? Uh, I, I've watched a couple of episodes of the old Dean's Titans show. Still very good. Really? Yeah. Uh, what what uh, made you decide to watch the old Dean Titans show? Oh, nothing. It was just on in the household, and I happened to be there at that time. So I was like, oh, oh, cool. I remember this show from when I was younger. Ah. <laughs> Honestly, though, po- it's still a very good show. The weirdest part of that show to me is that uh, the 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 re- like the theme song might just be the reason freaking P- Puffy and Yumi got their own show. <laughs> that is a I had no in my mind. <laughs> do, do you all also remember Hi Hi Puffy and Yumi? I do vaguely, but there's nothing precise. I have no idea what that is. It was basically, basically, it was like a sort of slice of life, but not not really show about these Japanese idols that um that that suddenly started appear, appearing in on in on Cartoon Network because their songs uh, got used on Cartoon Network. Well, I don't know if they started appearing because, but there's a good chance. <laughs> All right. Because the, teen, the, the, the old Teen Titans, Titans theme song was sung by them, and I think they they did something else as well, aside from their own show. That's all. That's also quite weird. Because I've looked it up uh, since since I last saw it, like actually, and apparently, because over here it was just just the cartoon parts that they showed. Apparently, over there there were also live action vlog parts. <laughs> <laughs> Vlogs uh, back in two thousand four. Wild. I feel like I do remember this. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, like, people people like to shit, shit on that show now, which, like, I don't remember how what how the show was anyway. And I, I've got to assume that the live action vlog parts made it worse. So, <laughs> live action vlogs are. Rarely ever good. So I I would assume your, your assumption is correct. But yeah, what were you what you had blah, freaking hell. What were you going to say, W? Not to interrupt with something that I'm not sure anyone here cares about, but apparently little Richard just passed away. Oh Oh yeah, that guy. See, I had seen uh something on Twitter, I think, that was saying R.I.P. Little Richard, and I was like, wait, wait, I thought that dude was already dead. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I did, too. (laughs) Yeah. That's why I was confused. I was like, what, is it his death anniversary? How old was he supposed to be today, maybe? Oh, no, it turns out he just passed away, like, a couple hours ago, so, oh. What do you know? I feel kind of awkward now. I mean, it's one of those things where once a guy, for one thing, is pretty much retired from music, right? Mm-hmm. And he's also established as being something of a fucking legend. So when you're retired and you're an old legend and you don't go out and do things anymore or even make any public appearances for anyone, the assumption that you are dead, I think, is pretty natural for someone who is alive past the peak of your career, you know? Right. Right. So, yeah, there's uh, the little acknowledgement Richard, little Richard just passed away. I just found that out right now as I picked up my phone. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's weird because um, over here when Rockabilly came over as a music genre. What? Uh, uh, yes, that happened. Hungary has been trying to be America for a while, guys. <laughs> but... Yeah, so... When rockabilly and rock and roll and stuff like that came came over from the U.S., uh, two people got picked up to represent two forms of art that are slightly related. So we, and if you wanted to call someone comedy, in singing you called them Little Richie, <laughs> and then in dancing you called them Fred Astaire. Okay. Yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> But it 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 still kind of hold, holds up because uh, mainly because uh, Hungary doesn't make a lot, lot of good dance music, so we still use the ones that were made like fifty years ago. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, nobody makes good dance music. True. You just can't dance. That's also true. There are several traumatic memories associated with that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Anything else, Fink? Uh, anything else? I, I had mentioned the comic thread, I think it was, that I started going back and rereading the Ultimate X-Men from 2001. Oh, did you read about uh, Charles Xavier's one true nemesis? I don't get that reference. What is it? At, at some point, maybe not a comic you've read yet, one of the Ultimate X-Men issues has a issue where Red Skull sneaks into the X-Mansion. And he starts pushing Xavier along. And he says, Now, Xavier, it's time for you to face your one true nemesis. Stairs! And then he just throws him down a set of stairs because he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> That's very... No, that definitely haven't gotten to that point yet. That, that, that really just shows how tasteful Ultimate Marvel was, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah... As I had mentioned in the comic thread, boy, is it not good. What, you don't like Wolverine watching Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch fuck from the bushes? Oh, that didn't go until like 2009, oh. several, several years later. Oh no. Yeah. But, oof. <laughs> it's like, I remember having a sort of love-hate relationship with it, because there were a lot of ideas and a lot of uh character developments quote unquote that i enjoyed but you know i'm a hardcore claremont burn uh artist i always forget the name to until you remind me it's like that's my era of the x-men anything else is basically non-canonical to me so ultimate x-men is just just god awful good lord how did i like anything about it is Magneto, one of the greatest villains of all time, one of the greatest characters in general of all time. How do we go from Magneto 616 and all his character development, decide, hey, we're going to make another universe that's more grounded in reality, and then turn it around and just make him that one-dimensional villain that he started off as all over again? Well, I mean... It's like, if At what... some point in the issues, he they they basically confirmed that yeah, Magneto, once once he's taken over the world as mutant leader, he he's probably gonna enslave and eat humans. It's like you have to take a step back and think what. So that's how the next. What was this writer smoking? Good lord! I... Notified the ICP, we found out how how magnets work. You have to feed them people, yeah. Uh, there is, you have to keep in mind somewhat the uh, environment surrounding Magneto at Marvel at that time, because that would have been the same time that uh, Grant Morrison was writing X-Men in the 616, right? Because this would have been 2003, right. 2003, right? Grant Morrison famously hates Magneto. Right. Because he says that he thinks that Magneto's sympathetic backstory and sympathetic motives are bullshit, and Grant Morrison's eyes, Magneto is just a terrorist. Again, I and that's what the ultimate Magneto is reduced to, just simple acts of terrorism. I think Which, it's, I think it's might I add it, for the time, was incredibly distasteful as well. 9-11 happened maybe a year before this. That was what I was just about this. to say. Yeah. But my perspective and then is... In these ultimate X-Men issues, you've got terrorist attacks where people are blowing things up with bombs. You know? Yeah. It's like, not good, not good for the times, barely good now. It's wildly well, insensitive. I did just mention Red Skull abusing the disabled, right? You mentioned what? I said I did just mention Red Skull abusing the disabled, right? Yes. Yes, he did. Like, I think it's also worth noting here from the opposite perspective. I think that at this time, people were less sympathetic to Magneto because, like, some degree of association of Magneto with terrorism is inevitable. So the idea of a sympathetic terrorist was definitely far-reaching in 2002 right. 2003. <laughs> right. It's, you know, and, and it's the, where's the line between a freedom fighter and a terrorist, right? Mm-hmm. 
The, the line is who won the conflict. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so anyways, you guys should talk for a little bit because my computer just did the strangest fucking thing and I can't figure out what the fuck happened. What? Oh, that doesn't sound good. Did no, the train come back? Is it is it the brown light again? No, 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 no. It's not a glitch or a bug. It's just that Windows 10, for some reason, decided it's going to kick in the Xbox UI for some reason. Oh, nifty. Okay, okay I fixed it. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Worst character in Ultimate X-Men other than Magneto. Ah... Uh, there are two correct it's... answers in my mind. <laughs> what are those two answers in your mind? Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. That doesn't happen until much, much later. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, like I had mentioned in the comic thread, you know how I was saying it seems like they didn't quite know what they wanted to do with the Ultimate Universe in the beginning? Yeah. Because, Yeah. They're like, oh, we got to make it all, all gritty and realistic. And then here's the artist drawing Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Quicksilver looks the exact same. Scarlet Witch, the exact same. <laughs> Stupid little head frame dress thing. All, it's like, like, nothing about them changed whatsoever. So they look wildly out of place. Please tell me the rest of the X-Men are all wearing black leather. They're all wearing black leather. Oh my god, that just makes Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch look so dumb. Yeah. It's like... And they're the only two that weren't changed at all. You know, Magneto, they changed his helmet so it's got a more sleek design, doesn't have the little uh, devil horns on it or anything. And they changed his color scheme, obviously, because it's red and purple, you know, that kind of stands out. So now he's like gray and purple ish, but more grays. Then, then I think they've got Blob wearing black, and they've turned Mastermind from you know whatever he wore beforehand into a. I think he was wearing black as well, and they've kind of given him a. I don't know, kind of a more hipstery look for nowadays. So he's got the long tied back hair and a little nice mustache and goatee combo. Didn't Mastermind back in the day just wasn't he just an old guy in a trench coat? Yes. <laughs> Every now and, and then Kirby was just like that, I guess. Yeah. And Toad they probably changed the most. Cause, you know, old school Toad just looked like an ugly short person. Yeah. Ultimate Toad is, you know, Nasty looking in a green. So yeah, th those are the big changes they made to the villains. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, no changes whatsoever, and it looks wildly out of place. Wasn't it Ultimate Marvel that gave Toad the ability to spit acid? Yes. That was a good change. Yes. Because to Toad's always been one of the lamest Marvel villains in 616, but you give him little right. things like that, and it makes him a little less shit. <laughs> yeah. That and, like, the occasional times where it turns out he's actually smarter than people give him credit for. That's always a fun <laughs> The mastermind behind the conspiracy was... Toad? Who could have seen that coming? Uh. But yeah, like, we were talking about characters. Well, let's get back on that, because I had one thing I really want to note. The series is terrible at developing characters... Because one thing I will give Bendis a ton of credit for in his Ultimate Spider-Man run is he wrote it in a way in that you would kind of develop with Peter as you go along. You could jump in and not need to know what's what in order to understand things. Because he would kind of hold your hands with all the situations going forward. With Ultimate X-Men, the writer, I don't remember who the writer was. I'll have to go back and check that. I might do it right now. Hang on. So the writer writes in a way in which if you haven't ever read a X-Men comic before and you don't know these characters, things just aren't going to make sense and it's dumb because this is supposed to be a new universe and you're supposed to be recreating these characters for a new generation. It doesn't accomplish that whatsoever. It's like and the ones that they did change are changed for the far worst. 
Dorm, my girl, my queen. They they absolutely butchered her. I think there was an ultimate storm. Yes, she's one of the founding members of the X-Men. And do you know where they pick up her story at? Don't 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 tell me like a Ugandan child soldier camp. No, 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 no. This is America. I think American. Storm Storm's American in Ultimate Universe? No, she's still from Africa, and she actually yells at Toad for calling her American at one point. But where oh, do you no. think they find the black American in this new X-Men run? Oh, God. Plantation. They find her in jail. Oh, it, it, nah. Boy. <laughs> what? Because oh, good was... Lord. Did Mark Millar write this? No wonder I hate it. When did they introduce the idea of Storm being a master thief? Because I know that was a 616 thing. That was Claremont. And it's probably, if not from the very beginning, a little while after that. It, it was early. I remember it, I remember Storm's backstory I thought was one of the weirder ones because she transitions kind of oddly and abruptly from, like, young Master Thief to God worshipped by all the villagers. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, that's, oof, okay. Yeah, uh. I mean, if they want to do a, if they want the ultimate line to have a uh, black dude in an American prison angle, they already have Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whatever. They, they were trying to make it new and hot and edgy and topical, so. <laughs> and it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and we all know the new hot, edgy thing, topical thing is twincest. <laughs> oh, Mark Millar did they write the first Mark Miller did it from issues. the beginning? Uh-huh. I did not know that. I thought he just took over near the end. Oh, boy, because wasn't he the one that put ult the Ultimates in the grave, too? Yeah. Was it him or Jeff Loeb that wrote Ultimatum? Jeff Loeb was Ultimatum. Uh, Mark Millar was apparently Ultimate X-Men and the first two Ultimates. And Civil War. And Civil War. <laughs> and Civil War. We can't forget that. Uh-huh. And Old Man Logan, I believe. Which... Uh, that might have been as well. Old Man Logan wasn't terrible compared to everything else he's done. Co comparatively, you know, I still didn't like it. Uh, the comic or the movie? Which are you talking about? Either. Yeah, that's fair. Honestly, I think I prefer the movie over the comic. I do I do too. Like, that's the one part of it we can agree on. <laughs> right. Yep, Mark Millar, and responsible for that travesty as well. Yeah, he also did Kick-Ass, I believe? Yes. Right. Uh, it's a very common insult against him. I forget who said this. It, someone like Grant Morrison at one point uh, asked him to, asked him, like, what's the difference between your writing and Mark Miller's? And Grant Morrison said, well, I don't write for Mil Mo for Hollywood, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it, it's funny how Grant Morrison's one of the comic book writers who loves to dunk on other comic book writers. At the same time, he's not very good. <laughs> right. There's, <laughs> like, There's a lot of stuff he gets thrown. Yeah, he, he's, he's made more stinkers than he's made good ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Anything else? Anything else? No, that about does it on my end. All right, Addy, what's up? All right. So uh, that, this is actually something that I did last week, but I forgot. Yeah. I played Total War Shogun 2. Oh, uh, was the game able to run for you? Yes. Okay, that's a shock. Yes, so it tur turns out the game is able to run... It only takes like 30 minutes to start up because for whatever reason, the freaking, the place where they tell, they, they show you the logos of all the shit they used, that, that takes a lot to load. There may be a mod on the workshop to turn that off. There is for most other Total Wars, but I don't know if they did that for Shogun 2. But yeah, so I tried that. Uh, well, I, obviously I ain't no freaking 
war general. <laughs> But I did manage to freaking kill uh, Uesugi Kenshin, I think he was, yeah. You so I, more, I managed... You've made more yeah? progress in that game than I have. Maybe. So I was able to um, go to war with Uesugi Kenshin and win a fight where he had 300 plus people and I had like 150. And he ran away and then immediately sent, sent for me to ask for peace. Yeah. And then I told him to pay me freaking like a thousand gold per turn because I wanted to go to war. You can filch the AI for loads of money in Total War. Especially, for, that. especially for security. But yeah, that, that was funny. Total War, Shogun 2 is like, people still consider it like, like it kind of competes for the title of the best with Warhammer 2. Because on one hand, it is one of the harder titles in the series, but it's also denoted to be, like, the most fair, and, like, the one where it feels like you can pull shit off, you know? Yeah. And do you have anything else to say about it? Uh, hmm. No, not really. I managed to, like... <laughs> For whatever reason, the cavalry couldn't catch up with the generals, so that's how I, all of my generals died. Oh, yeah. Yep, that was a hard lesson for me when I first started playing the historical Total Wars. Do not dive your general directly into the enemy. <laughs> That's the thing, I, di I didn't. I just, I just, I was just like, okay, so the cavalry, according with the general, because he has cavalry, can slide, like, slowly walk in as the, as the fight is going, or, like, they can attack, attack the um, archers while the foot soldiers atta attack the other foot soldiers. No! No, apparently walking means going going like a freaking 15 man speed. Oh yeah. Especially so, if yeah. You hold, if you uh, have a big group of units uh, selected all at once, and you tell them to walk, they will walk at the speed, uh, they will move at the speed of the slowest unit. Which is why you want to have the cavalry moving separately from everybody else. And that's how I did it. Okay. Walking is also very slow, yes. It, no, it, no, that, that, that's the thing. The people were running, and the, the cavalry out of walked the running people. <laughs> Somehow. I mean, horses can walk pretty fast. You ever seen a horse just gently walk? True. But, like, yeah, I, I, I do like to use generals for going after the archers sometimes. Because generals are really good at fighting. It's just that if they die, you get fucked. <laughs> Yeah. It, it's but, really uh, bad when you go out to the campaign map and it's like, well, the uh, last of your line died, so uh, you lose. Yeah. I mean, that, that didn't ha thankfully that didn't happen to me because I my castle was actually well guarded and all that. It, <laughs> the, reason, the reason I lost was because Kenshin teamed up with someone else and they pincered me. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And it, even even then, they did, didn't besiege my castle. I just gave up. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. That, that's my problem. I always have in total wars. I go until I take a single loss, but then I take a single loss, and I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm starting a new playthrough. <laughs> I have to have a perfect record. I, I I took a loss. My first general died in died in battle, but then I got a, I got another one, and then I got four more. Because <laughs> every, every turn they they came up to be like, yo. I'm good. Hire me. And I, I had like freaking 30,000 gold in the treasury, so I was like, sure. <laughs> you just got generals sitting in the castle doing nothing? No, I just I just had the Dutta family heads in the castle, and then all, all, all of the other gen generals were supposed to be out. By which I mean that one of them was out, and the other two died on the way. <sighs> See, yeah, that's the problem with hiring older generals. They'll probably just die of old age. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, how do you build your armies, but, like, I'm going to assume you didn't get that far in the campaign, so most of your choices would have just been Ashigaru with spears, Ashigaru with bows, nothing else. I got all all the way to, like, light cavalry and um, bow and katana samurai. Oh, no, actually, I did, I did also get um, Odachi, I think it was, Odachi samurai. Nadachi the Amurai, yes, the uh, big money maker for the Date clan. Yeah. They're a weird unit because they're actually technically considered, like, 
they do a ton of damage when they immediately hit, but then once you can't have them stay in combat for too long because they're actually not that effective at staying in combat. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, because from my limited experience with, with them, they did a better job than the freaking Katana Samurai. <laughs> I mean, staying, staying in combat. Maybe I'm wrong then, yeah. I mean, samurai are just flatly better than Ashigaru, so. Now, you, you never went up against the Oda clan, though, and I've always heard that, like, the Oda clan is yeah, fu- they, <laughs> fucking deadly. Thankfully, Nobunaga got wiped out before I even got near him. Ha! <laughs> I guess that's what he gets for declaring war on everyone, huh? Yeah. But, like, apparently Oda Clan and Ashigaru are just terrifying because they have pikes instead of spears. Ah. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah. else is doing medieval warfare and they're doing renaissance shit over there. Alright, anything else? Yes, I also played and I'm still playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Single player, right? Yes. Okay, what act have you gotten to? I mean, I'm. I think I'm finishing up Act Five. Jesus. I started yesterday. Okay, so yeah, I. You're not doing all the tiny bullshit like I did. I did. I was trying to do everything: hunt all the legendary animals, do all the side missions, do all the little rank stuff, hunt all the bandits and the bounties, and I got fucking. Uh, I I stopped it at uh, the end of like Act Three, I think. <laughs> Act Three is the one yeah. where you go to Louisiana, right? I think so. Yeah. So that game's plot apparently picks up real hard near the end. <laughs> I don't know. So for all I know, is that there's two people I really hate from the main group. <laughs> One of them, one of them is obvious. One of them is obvious, and you know, you know it already. The other one might not be as obvious. <laughs> I remember Lantra Dead too. Yeah. I think Pink. I think Pink knows who is the most hated guy on that cast. Oh yeah. That motherfucker. <laughs> Freaking Michael. Uh huh. But the thing is, Michael is only worsened. By the existence and whatever, whatever, freaking Dutch Dutch Van Dyke does or whatever his name is, I wasn't paying attention. That game ruined Dutch. When you play through Red Dead Redemption One, Dutch is this excellent tragic character, of like an old West hero who's kind of lost his mind and become obsessed with the passing of freedom with the modern day world. And then Red Dead Two just turns him into a fucking scheming hack who's just trying to rob everyone of their cash and all of his aspirations of freedom are just bullshit to hide the fact that he's trying to make a load of money. Yeah, to me, he seems like a freaking, like a manipulative asshole who is basically running a cult. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And also, in his past time, sucks Michael's cock. Yes. So... Rockstar's really terrible about having the obvious traitor trope. Micah is the worst example of it I've seen in any fiction ever. Yeah. The moment they start to suggest, hey, someone in the group's betraying us and selling us out, you are sitting there like, boy, I wonder who! <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's almost like, between the times when Micah was us, nothing went wrong, and then when he was with us, everything went wrong. It's almost like... And and then freaking and and then Dutch suggested this was John. Yep. And John's so nice to Dutch in Red Dead One. Oh man, look, I, I guess it's always been a flaw. They've made it clear with John that John's always bought into the Dutch's kind of ideals more than Arthur did. But still, oh boy. Like honestly, like another thing is. You always shit on uh, Japanese games because the protagonist can't kill and all that. They're doing the same shit with Arthur here. Arthur's the worst. Arthur's success. Freaking Dutch does one thing right, finally, and actually kills the guy who is after them. And Arthur's like, oh, but no, my Fifi's. He could have been saved. 
it, it's incredible because you can have Arthur be a complete sociopath outside of cutscenes. I, I just have him set up as a freaking like a sharpshooter, <laughs> more or less. But it, like, oh shit! But like, yeah, it, it, I I might just play him as a sociopath. I don't know. It's because uh... the because the the ob- obviously sick guy I didn't didn't actually beat during the beat up animation, but everything everyone else I do usually. <laughs> that. Vi- violence is quite visceral in that game, so it's hard for me to envision Arthur as anything other than kind of a piece of shit, you know? Like, the fact that he can just strangle people, like... Okay, here's something I want... Uh, like, one of the little touches of detail touches that's kind of creepy. Did you know there's a unique version of the strangling animation that will only play if you're strangling your opponent while they are in a in shallow water? Ah, No. Arthur, instead of strangling them, will instead put their face down, shove their face down into the shallow water. (laughs) Ah, nice. I don't know why they did that. The thing is, like, I appreciate those sorts of little details, and then they don't give a shit about the big details, like how the game's switching my freaking loadout every two seconds. Yes. Oh, man. Just just give me my freaking pistols. I have have made a freaking... uh, Clad black and a clad white pistol, just so just so I can ha- have cool points, <laughs> and they get switched out every second fight. Yes, it's annoying. <laughs> I had that exact problem in Red Dead One with the multiplayer. It always wanted me to use the fucking volcanic pistol, which I hate. Th- that's the one I'm using because it was the most expensive one, and I had like freaking five thousand dollars cash on me. <laughs> right, if you like it, you like it, but I didn't like it, and the game wanted me to use it, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, for for me, it's doing the same with the freaking the uh... Lamat revolver. No, it, it's not even that. It's the freaking it's the, like the, the bull something pist- pistol or revolver. It really says a lot about how much I played Red Dead One that I can remember all the gun names, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man. <sighs> but yeah, I, I don't know what it is. like. It, it's the it's the most basic start start out pistol that it gives switching my guns to. It's so annoying. <laughs> oh, the Cattleman. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Is it because Arthur probably uses the Cattleman's in, cattleman in cutscenes? No, he's using my special guns in cutscenes, and then it goes to gameplay, and I have the Cattleman. Oh, that's just stupid. Yeah. Fuck, I, I never noticed that because I like the Cattleman. I hate it. I mean, like, I, would, I wouldn't hate it specifically. Just because of that, but I basically use use my pistols as like shorter range freaking flamethrower rifles, and I've also customized the shit out of them. I spent like I don't I don't know like five hundred bucks on just those two pistols, so I'd like to actually use them. Game. <laughs> Can you put the cattleman like in your horse or something? No. No, because because then like they they a cutscene will play, and then. The game will switch it out for me anyway, as if I always had the cattle man. That that's, that's fucking dumb. Like Ar- Arthur just talks with somebody, and the cattleman teleports into his inventory, even if he didn't have it. Yes, and the and the pistol that I had teleports out. What the fuck? Because remember, you can't actually freaking change equipment file on the fly. You need to be near the horse. But the horse is sometimes not available, or you just can't change it because the game doesn't allow you, and then the cattleman. I don't... This must be a new bug? I don't remember this at launch. I don't know, because I, I looked looked it up quickly, and... I don't know if it was at, at launch, but people have been basically saying, just live with it, Rockstar is not going to fix it, they're too busy freaking swearing in the microtransaction money. Fucking... Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe I didn't notice, but maybe I maybe I just kept using the cattleman past the point I wasn't supposed to, so I just never noticed. Who knows? But yeah, uh, there was something else that I was really freaking pissed off about, gameplay wise, but I don't remember what. So let's go into the third thing. With GTA Five, I I really hated the, the police AI, and I didn't know if they could go worse. They went worse. Oh no! Really? Yes. 
Because in GTA 5, it uh, spawns police so that they're like a block away from you or like down the like um you know straight straight street um freaking out you know what you call it one of one of those cross pass things yeah, yeah. like they they are spawn on the other, yeah, intersection well, you know on an intersection they spawn on the other on the other side of the intersection and they can go be, uh, before you be, uh, without noticing you and stuff like that. Red Dead legit just spawned a cop behind me. Really? But it, but yes. Legitimately. Also, I was, like, I was running away on my horse. And uh, I, w- I would have gotten away. And then the game just legitimately spawned a cop on a horse behind me. I saw it on the minimap. Huh, okay. I don't remember anything <laughs> happening like that to me, but I never pissed off the cops that much. I mean, n- neither did I. It's just part of the story missions later on. Th- that's true. Oh, if it's part of a story mission, then yeah, they almost certainly are spawning fake cops in if they want to keep you running when you're when you <clears throat> would have gotten away otherwise. But I don't. I don't think they like. I, I don't. I don't think it was a thing where they wanted you to be wanted for a while because there was no set way, and basically I just had to run run into the wilderness from the city to get away from the cops. Which they didn't want me to do because the freaking other mission was in the middle of the city. Or at least I'd assume that they didn't want me to make too long treks. I mean, with Red Dead Redemption 2, they want you to make a lot of long treks. True. <laughs> that, is, that is one fucking game where it takes forever to get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And even, even the fast travel. Have you? Did you get to the part where you unlock fast travel? I unlocked the ability to fast travel from camp, and I know you could take a stagecoach. Yeah, those those are your options. I, I figured, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this this game, like, there, I I'm having fun with it, and then sometimes the game just comes down and then and with a big no flump block. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's. You get a certain feeling that Red Dead 2 is what the Housers always wanted to make, right? Yeah. It, it feels like the ultimate of, like, so many of their tropes, right? And I mean this both in terms of gameplay and story. Because what is the fetish that Rockstar and the Hauser brothers always have in stories? The obvious traitor who's a scumbag and treats you and everybody else like shit, but everybody abides him until he betrays you. Every rock star story has that character. Is there one in Bully? I f- I'm forgetting. Oh, fuck yeah. Fucking Gary. He was the worst. He's one of the worst. Like, at least... <laughs> Gary- I don't remember Gary. Gary betrays you. Gary's the main villain of the game. Oh, him. Yeah. Gary's like... I mean, Gary, at least, like, he betrays you very quickly in the game, so it's not as annoying as it is with Micah, because Micah waits until the final fucking act to betray you, openly. But, like, still, Gary's one of the worst examples of, like, this kid could not more obviously be an awful person. Jimmy, what are you doing hanging out with him? The Uh, guy literally dresses up as a Nazi for fun. (laughs) That, you know, you'd think that would send up red flags, but apparently not with Jimmy. (laughs) Apparently not. He is a skinhead. That that is true. That is true. Oh man. But yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> like un- honestly, if what I do in gameplay would have some freaking change on the story, I think Dutch and Michael would be in a ditch somewhere. Probably <laughs> my Michael at the start of the game. Dutch probably probably the time when he said that nobody believes him aside from Michael, he's the only only one who's loyal. Well, admittedly, you probably wouldn't have killed Dutch if Michael was already dead. So. Now nah, there's other other stuff that he does that, that annoys me. Of course, I'm I'm sure there was something dirty with that steamboat heist or something that I didn't find out about. Like Mike, steamboat, yeah. Micah, honestly, like if Arthur had complete freedom, Micah would be dead in the tutorial. Yeah. When he tries to rape Sadie, Arthur would just blow his head off. And then freaking 
like the, the thing with Dutch is that, that annoys me, aside from Micah, is that whenever any problem arises, he's just like, trust me, have faith, faith, trust, faith. They have no meaning anymore. Faith, Arthur. You gotta yeah. have faith. It, it mainly Dutch does have one of my favorite little interactions I've had in that game. At one point, I killed a deer and was bringing it back to camp, right? Yeah. And Dutch went up to try and talk to me, but you can't talk to people while you're carrying deer. So yeah. Arthur just said nothing to him, turned around, walked towards the butcher, and Dutch from halfway across camp just yelled, All right, well, fuck you then. Oh, I, I did I did that on purpose. I didn't feel like talking with Dutch. <laughs> you can... Red Dead 2 makes it very fun to be a dick to the NPCs. <laughs> like, oh, dude. Yeah. I, I, I remember there was one time where I was just going out of my way to fucking push Micah around as much as possible. I can't shoot him, but I can still shove him. Yeah, the, the 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 best part of this whole ride writing of this game is I'm gonna spoil you some something, not I've too much. I've been on the ending. All right, then I I can spoil as much as I want. The only good part of the freaking theme die because Micah. Ah, hey, I know. Uh, don't yeah? don't uh spoilers spoilers spoilers. Choi Charles and Sadie survive. Maybe, but Javi freaking like Javi is still alive where I am, but he's ob he'll obviously die. Oh, Lenny got shot on the freaking Lenny got sh shot on the building in front of my eyes. Freaking uh, Hosea, he, he th that was Dutch is doing. I went down. <laughs> that was Dutch. Fucking Dutch not being loyal to his husband. Yeah. But basically, basically, like any any issues, any freaking deaths. Oh, also, Sean, Sean, and freaking uh, Kieran, as well. I knew Kieran wasn't going to last as soon as they introduced him. <laughs> I mean, me too, me too. But then, like, come on. Like, yeah. Michael gets to live, and he doesn't. It it, it is genuinely impressive. Like, any one of those guys that you just listed off is worth. Ten times more to the team than Micah. Yeah. At least Kieran actually freaking tidied the place up. Yeah. Once in a while. Micah doesn't even do that. He's the walking embodiment of shit. I mean, Kieran, Bloody hell. Kieran yeah. didn't betray them despite the fact that he's not even one of them. Yeah. In he, fact, he, he was part of the, of the rival gang. Yeah. And, like, it's not like, I mean, at some points it's suggested, like, oh, Dutch keeps Micah around because he figures that they need a ruthless killer on the team. Except Dutch keeps Micah around because he gives good head. Like, Sadie's there. We have a ruthless killer. I don't know if I'd call Sadie ruthless, but then again, I, I sympathize most with her. <laughs> well, all I remember is the first fight scene, like, she's in. When she decides she's going to be one of the guys, and she... And immediately, she just goes on a fucking killing rampage, and Arthur's like, Whoa, whoa, hey! <laughs> after that, she has an even- After that, she has an even better scene, dude. Oh my god. So, so the the group moves into a house, and the house it gets atta attacked by the oldest oldest calls, and everybody locks themselves up into the house, and Sadie goes out with the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and she lives. So... <laughs> It's like that old fucking joke. They've got us surrounded, sir. Wonderful. They've fallen for our trap. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like even the game was like, protect city. And I'm like, no, I don't think I need to. <laughs> She's <laughs> She's not but, like the fucking uh, song from Doom just starts playing BFG. <laughs> yeah. Rip and tear uh, until it is done. Um, so yeah. Uh, freaking! I think Charles. Uh, yeah. his, I think Charles earned his place as my favorite NPC the moment he choke slammed Micah. I'm uh, not sure if I've seen that yet, but oh, it's one of the it's um, one of the uh, campsite uh, interactions. Is Micah will come up and call him like a half breed and a million other things because you know he's Micah, and Charles just wordlessly stands up and fucking choke slams him Kane style. And freaking he, good, good on him! And then he just puts his finger in Micah's face. 
and says something like, don't fucking talk to me. And then walks away. Oh, I, I think I actually heard that one, but I missed it. <laughs> oh, oh that, that sucks. But yeah, like... Also, I just want I just want to say that like, I spent the longest time avoiding my my freeing Michael because I knew that something bad would happen. Yep. <laughs> I mean, the guy as soon as you get him out of jail, fucking murders a woman and her husband for no reason. For fucking, guns. What a fucking piece of shit! You know. He, the thing is, the thing is, not only does he mur- murder a freaking woman and, a, and and her husband just for guns, not only does he get you a freaking. Uh, bound, a bounty on your head that that's worth three hundred dollars. He also just walks through the town while you get while you get to shoot all of the inhabitants. Yep. He does nothing. He is. And then, he, then he gives you a shitty pistol. Oh man, you know what I also love? Micah is such a piece of shit that even Bill looks down on him. Like, in Red Dead 1, when you meet Bill, Bill is the worst person. He's a shit stain. But my god, like, even Bill is like, oh man, Mike is a piece of shit, ain't he? Bill the guy, is Bill the guy from, the, or Bill is Bill the guy who looks like the minor toy from Thor Story? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Drunk Civil War veteran. Or something like that. Or, or, I, I forget what war he's supposed to be a veteran of, but fuck it. It's not important. I, th- I think it's Civil War, because that, that's the one to be, keep being re- referenced. Yeah, there's, def- there's definitely a lot of Civil War animosity in that game. I, I say that considering one of the acts of the game is devoted to fighting Confederate rebels. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, so... I'm, I'm also in a... You know, freaking like I'm having having a bit of a crisis with how I played the game because I want to play it third person because it's a freaking third person game, but then shooting in third person sucks because it's Rockstar. So I want to so I want to play in first person so I can actually shoot shit. But then I, why did I spend like freaking three hundred bucks on my outfit? <laughs> At least you're afforded the choice. Cyberpunk. Yeah, I was about to say that exact same thing. We've got all this awesome character customization options here, and you can see none of it unless there are mirrors around. How can I see if my there co- are mirrors around? How can I see my custom cock and balls if I'm in first person? <laughs> Look down. <laughs> Look down. <laughs> Imagine that. Like you're just in the middle of a fight, gun- in a gunfight, and you just look down and see you see him dead. You've just been naked the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> That's psychological warfare. We're being killed by a naked man with a massive penis. Uh, why, why did you point out his massive penis? It's just too big. I can't take my eyes off it. I, I can see. I can see the lower half of his body. It's all penis. <laughs> I'm missing every shot because his penis just demands attention. <laughs> Imagine like putting a sticker on it, and it becomes the high pop. The freaking <laughs> ah, shit. Attach a bullet. Hey, hey, attach a bullet hey, shield. Hey, to your, attach a bullet shield to your genitalia. Yeah. <laughs> attach googly eyes to, to the balls. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh man! If that did not that, that's, that, that's that's one of that's one of the side jobs that you can you can take up in cyberpunk. <laughs> you, the, the, your character knows how to, how to make a freaking bridge. And they get hired as a, as a small elephant. <laughs> anyway, yeah. You, you just deflect bullets by helicoptering. Yeah. It's like, it's like a fucking Jedi with a lightsaber, right? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, all right, anything else left to say about Red Dead 2? I think that's it. Hmm. Well, you gotta have faith, Arthur. Man, that that game came out around the same time as God of War 4, so that was really just the time of boy, wasn't it? Yeah. Which do you prefer, boy or boy? Boy. Boy. <laughs> With uh, no emotion. 
it's incredible how Kratos went from one of the worst characters in gaming to, like, a fantastic character in one game, isn't it? I literally just got the game over and read that because the guy who was standing next to me died, apparently, even though he was he was right next to me. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Did the bullets deflect off of Arthur onto him? Yes. <laughs> He just used his rugged good looks to deflect the bullets. Oh, man. Oh, man. A have you gone to the steps to get Fat Arthur yet? No. Whoa, I need to play Red Dead. Yeah. I haven't even... It's on Game Pass. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I need to clear up about 70 gigs on my hard drive so I can download it. No, no, you need, you need more. Oh, fuck, 90? <laughs> it's 101. 101. Oh, my fucking God. Jesus! You need a whole new Xbox to download that thing. Yeah, no kidding. Fuck. Right, so... Oh, man. I I'm glad they at least brought back Fat CJ. <laughs> oh, man. All right, the, the, the last thing that I wanted to point out about Red Dead 2 is that... It has... It, it, it has it has stealth parts that you can start to start isn't really good made sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i mean the, the stealth is all right when, when, when they actually allow you to do stealth but more often than not i run into run into a point where i try to stealth kill a guy and then everybody is I immediately alerted yeah even though they were like five freaking states away <laughs> yep the rock star problem as i call it yeah so, that throwing knives and tomahawks yeah. are your friend. I I did I did it by freaking going up behind the guy and stabbing him with a knife. That works too. But people were still al alerted. That's the thing. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so it it has it has normal normal style. It has um freaking you know a big big revenge plot. Because that that's the that's what I got out of Dodge as a character. <laughs> it has freaking it, it has parkour in limit, limited limited amounts in freaking Sandani. Basically, Red Dead Redemption Two is not much of an Assassin's Creed game as Odyssey, really. I mean, yeah, it, it's historical too. Don't forget that. It, it, yeah, it's also historical. Uh, some weapons are way too strong. <laughs> If you're in a melee fight, just parry. It's really more of an Assassin's Creed game than Odyssey, honestly. Yeah. There's no sail. Uh, there, there is sailing, but it's only there. J you can get a little, a little tiny boat, but it's not really important. Just like in Brotherhood. Yeah. You just get a little rowboat, but that's it. All right. Red Dead Redemption 2 is officially the like freaking eighth Assassin's Creed game or whatever. <laughs> I, forgot, I forget which which one is on, which one of the C was. Like just just cut in cut in freaking Layla ooing and eyeing at horses and <laughs> it's, it's there. <laughs> Assassin's Creed eight, boy. Yeah. No Assassin's I mean, Creed eight yeah. faith. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me actually count which which, uh, which one this would have been. So we had four, then we had Unity, Syndicate, Origins, and Odyssey, so it would have been the ninth, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so Assassin's Creed 9, Fate. Unless you aren't counting Odyssey, in which case it is the eighth. Oh, yeah, you're right. Shit, did I pull the right number out of my ass? <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, could you imagine if you get to Act 6? And it starts off with, like, Arthur's, uh, descendant waking up from the, uh, fucking Abstergo bullshit. The animus, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the X, X6 starts, and Art, Arthur randomly finds a, a hidden blade. <laughs> a hidden blade in the Apple of Eden. Now the Apple, Apple of Eden will be introduced in the epilogue. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The epilogue? The Apple. Yeah, the epilogue. <laughs> the apple broke. Oh god, Dutch finds the apple. Oh no. Now Infinite I... Micus. Infinite Micus. Oh no. Now everyone just killed themselves right now. We can't let him we... have this victory. 
because remember, remember, the the Apple a- Apple just makes holograms of what what the user wills. So, ah. and Dutch would be a leaf in it, my cuz. Nah, everyone's oh, actually, gonna have faith. R four. Dutch actually would just do what Tom Walim did. Now that I think about it, because <laughs> all Tom Walim did was basically bra- use the use the Apple's powers to brainwash all of his followers to have blind faith in him. Yeah. Faith R four. And he just turned into a big <laughs> lizard or something. Ah, oh, bloody hell! So yeah, that, that we we found this out. Uh, I'm glad Soon wasn't here to break out into song at every time we said faith. <laughs> All right, anything else, Addy? I just gotta have faith, faith, faith. No, oh, it's fucking. <laughs> no, that's it. All right. Well, on my end, uh, it was mostly a mix of boring stuff. I've been watching a YouTube series of the Augscast playing Civilization games, and that gave me a hankering to play Civ, so I popped in a, just about an hour each into Civ 5 and Civ 6. And I was thinking, come the summer sale, you know. I hope 5 goes on sale. Oh, me too. Because... I remember it was on sale uh, last year in their summer sale, probably. And I was thinking of picking it up then, but I never actually got around to it. The problem but is that it's got... The, to... the second it goes on sale this year, it's mine. Five is... Like, six is... It, it's got some... Six has some things that are better than five. But I gotta admit that five does kind of feel better, you know? Because, I mean, city-states were, are worse than five. City-states are a lot worse. And they just implemented World Congress, so it's a little weird and it's a little different. But, like, it wasn't so spammy as it is in 6. And without the districts, right. your terrain matters a whole lot more. And, and there's more to it, of course. But, largely what I was thinking was, Civ Five is old enough that I think most of us could run it. That is very true. And it's, it's a tough stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's aged better than Civ 4. Because <laughs> Civ 4, that'd be, that'd be a whole new world for you and me. Well, more so for you, because that Civ 4 was the last Civ to have unit stacking. I uh, Yeah, I found that out the hard way. Uh-huh. But why is this unit not dying? Oh, there are multiple units here. Yep. I will always fondly remember the first, the only time I've tried to play Civ Four on Prince difficulty. Fran, I was just playing as Native Americans or something. I was just peacefully building one settlement, and then it's just oh surprise, doom stack of thirty French spearmen, <laughs> instant death. Oh fuck! Uh, the the only upside I can think of for Civ Four is that it's got a really good modding scene. But other than that, but like Civ Five, I'm, oof, I I hope it goes on sale for cheap. And other than that, it's mostly been usual business, playing the stuff for fighting game, uh, fighting games are of course, putting uh, time in on working on the wiki though I've been slowing down a bit. And I've been putting in a bit of time with Total War Warhammer 2, and I'm probably going to put in more time, partially because I've just got a hankering for it, but also because on Thursday, they announced the next DLC. Featuring Batman versus Morbid Obesity. What? You heard His greatest enemy. His greatest enemy. He didn't know know what to use the money for, and he was all alone, so... (laughs) He ate his problems away. So, <clears throat> this is like the most anticipated DLC for Total War Warhammer yet. Because it features one of the more popular eccentric characters. And let me provide a picture just to help you guys. Let me find a good picture. Here we go. Here we go. This is it. So, are you guys ready for a Warhammer lore minute? Yeah, I am. 
Behold, the greatest goblin of all time. That is a big boy, isn't it? That is a big boy. So, Grom the Paunch is a goblin who was pretty minor. Nobody gave a shit about him. Up until, well, see, he apparently got his hands on like a troll's arm or something that had been chopped off. And he ate it. And the thing is, trolls regenerate. So because he ate that troll, he is steadily getting fatter all the time. And it is, ah. also, it is also making him bigger and more muscular. So despite the fact that he's a tiny shit goblin, he is now larger than most orcs. So now, he has been able to make kind of a religious fervor about things and be like, oh, hey, I'm going to go kill all those elves. You guys want to join me? And so, of course, the uh, all the green-skinned boys were like, yeah, of course. And so they have to go and fight elf Batman, who hates them. And Pink was so excited for this that he left the he left. to go purchase a copy of Total War Warhammer 2 right now. Yep. That's just how excited he was. And really, I don't have anything more to say than that, because I know that like you guys aren't invested in the Warmer Fantasy universe. So I try to just show you the silly little highlights, right? Yeah. And like this is where Warhammer excels. And also... Kumbakarna. Yeah. And he also comes with a rework for the entirety of the Greenskins faction in the game, which is good, because the Greenskins faction is shit. <laughs> and has been shit since launch. So they're gonna be good now. Which leaves only one or two shit factions left in the game that just aren't fun to play. And bring us up to... I would say 13 out of... 14. 12 out of the 15 factions in the game are really good. Chaos Wood Elves and Beastmen still need some fucking work. Like, really need some work. But, this is, you know, it, it we've been really hyped up for this for a good while. And I do want to mention one last thing about it. So, the Total War guys, the uh, DLC trailer, every DLC trailer... Can, <clears throat> is a reference to some major movie, right? Yeah. And this one, they did too. So the elf guy is very obviously a send-up to Dark Knight, as in they show him interrogating a goblin, and he, of course, yells at the goblin, WHERE IS HE?! And the goblin just laughs at him, and then he exits the building and straight up does, like, the pose Batman does on the burning building after Rachel dies, you know? <laughs> like the exact pose what, like with the com exact camera shot and everything and then it immediately follows it up with Mad Max Fury Road style orc and goblin chariots all over the place and Grom standing over the masses like a Morton Joe and as someone who loves Dark Knight and loves Mad Max Fury Road and was really excited for this DLC pack I was really really happy about that I look forward to, to the trick in the Chaos's rework where, where they announced the rever rework by copying Dumb and Dumber 2. <laughs> oh, that, that'd be great. I'm, I'm just imagining two Chaos Warriors in there with the uh, Inquisitor dude from Vermintide. And one of the Chaos Warriors is just like, Hey, you want to hear the most annoying word sound in the world? And that's it. Either that or they, yeah. do, the, either that or they do the piss drinking bit. What are you going to say? I don't know. What what would be the freaking the dogmobile? The dogmobile, a chaos chariot. Ah. Uh, or they or they're just riding a big ass demon. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. What a what what a terrible movie. I forget. There. I know Ted vocally hates Dumb and Dumber, but Pink, weren't you also one of the people who vocally hates Dumb and Dumber? I have no idea what that is. Oh well, how? <laughs> but you you know who Jim Carrey is, right? Yeah. But you don't know his most famous movie. Nope, definitely never seen that one. That is weird. But Addy, you've watched Dumb and Dumber. I mean, I don't remember it, but I, I've most certainly watched it, yes. Pink, Addy is more American than you are. 
<laughs> like, the, to me, like, but I think of Dumb and Dumber, and I'm just reminded of freaking I, I, and Irene for some reason. Okay, I don't recognize that one. It was me, myself, and Irene in, in English, yeah. Ah. Uh, boy, translation is rough, huh? I mean, we, we only have one, one word for me, so yeah. <laughs> oh, man, language is weird. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, I, 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 Irene. <laughs> the, the Mexican release. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about something the other day. It, it's something yeah. that kind of sucks about living in the American continents, but, like, not living in the United States of America. Is that you are American, but you really can't call yourself American, because if you do, people will assume you're saying you're from the United States, right? Yeah. Right. But if you're speaking in Spanish, you actually don't have that problem. Because, to roughly translate it, in Spanish, you're from, if you're from the United States, they pretty much call you United Statesian. It's, ah. Yeah. And it, it's also funny... Because the Spanish put adjectives after the word they describe instead of before them. So it's also states united for them. So you can actually be a uni- united state or uni- state uniter. <laughs> you can be a state united. Yeah, that's what you can be over there. Or they, they call it, I think, Estados Unidense, I want to say. Yes. And that, that, that's just funny to me that they're the only ones who do that, but we don't. Despite the fact that we speak English, we don't have a word for being from the United States. <laughs> We're just my, American. My, the end. My my favorite way of do, doing this stuff is the freaking Japanese way, because Japanese don't give a shit about that that stuff. They just they just say, hey, yes, America person. <laughs> An America person. That's actually what they say. That, that, I love that, it. For American, they say America man. Um, yes, even better. America man. Yeah, it, it's actually Captain America. <laughs> Every time. The, you know and what, that, that, yeah. You know what's the language one that pisses me off? And this is again yeah. an English thing, but I'm sure there are plenty of worse examples in other languages. I hate that we don't have a word for like Chinese person, so some people just call them Chinese. That bugs me. That gets me for some reason. But the thing is. The thing is, it would be it would make logical sense to call them Chinese because they are from freaking China. The English messed up when they started calling vases Chinese. <laughs> what? Sorry, the freaking. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't they call like vases and uh, like uh, sil- not silverware, freaking plates and stuff like that Chinese over there? They don't call them Chinese. They call them China. But yes, I get what you're right. Saying. That yeah 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 yeah. Usually the way we clarify it is by calling it fine china. It it that is a very strange tendency but that that one at least kind of comes out of a weird way of respect it, when you think about it because it's still just us saying like hey chinese plates are rad so if it's a, a plate's really good we just call it chinese. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if we just applied that for every like stereotype national stereotype of a country doing something really well? <laughs> Oh man, this time... I, I, I immediately came up with a bad one. <laughs> Never mind. Like, imagine if we called nice cars, just call them fine Italian. Yeah. It, what? It, it's a fucking Camaro. Fine Italian. <laughs> oh man, this grocery store is fine German. <laughs> oh man. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man, I, I, I don't know how wh- whether this one could be a concerned offensive or not. Man, that ass is fine Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man, the, I, the, boob, the boob job you got is fine ocean. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> not, the, not, the, not, the, not even from anywhere, just the ocean, because it, it'll end up there anyway. <laughs> Um, I wish I came from a country that was known for its asses. <laughs> oh boy. All right. I don't think I've done anything else this week. Have I watched a movie? I may have watched a movie. Son of a bitch, I think I watched a movie. I can't recall what movie I watched, though. 
Son of a bitch. You know what? When you can't remember what movie you've watched, just pretend you didn't watch a movie at all. Guys, I didn't watch a movie this week. That's absurd. Who watches movies? Okay. Only I know I don't. No one watches movies. That, that's why theaters are going out of business. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't watch uh, movies. I watch the TikToks like the kids, you know? Because yeah, we're they, hip. And I, yeah, they, 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 did you do that sick freaking ghost ride with the Toozy slide? And I, because I'm a young kid, I definitely understand why they're TikToks now and not Vines. I definitely because, understand that. Because they got bought by China. <laughs> It is like... Well, actually, actually, here's the thing. Uh, Vine got shot down. They got assimilated into Twitter. So if, if you're watching GIFs or, or videos on Twitter, it's actually Vine. But also, then Musical.ly came up, which was... Uh, basically, it took Vine's place. And then Musical.ly got bought out by China. And then they got assimilated into TikTok, which is, the ti- which is what China had there, uh, over there for a while. So now everyone just has TikTok. Oh boy, so uh, you, you aren't going to be able to find any Hong Kong TikToks, are you? Possibly not. And if you do post one... Your social, social credit, 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 freaking, social credit score will, will reach zero. Yeah. Oh man. You have got zero zenny. Yeah. All right, I think we can probably call it here. Yep. All right. I'm not sure what we want to call this episode's name, because I don't think helicopter your penis to deflect bullets will work. <laughs> if so it is my cuss. best, but I'm not sure how to work any of that into a title that won't get us blacklisted. Infinite my cuss. It's the only way. <laughs> the infinite Micah. You make it sound like it's the equivalent of infinite Tsukiyomi. It is. <laughs> Like, it's probably you... it's probably it's probably worse. It's honestly probably worse because at least the Infinite Tsukuyomi shows you something you like. D- Dutch's pupils just turn into Micah's mustache. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that Dutch's pupils just become Micah's face. The, the sun gets eclipsed and Dutch floats into the sky while T posing. You didn't <laughs> have Mar- enough faith, <laughs> Arthur. My God. <laughs> and then Michael rips him in half from his side. <laughs> it turns out Michael, Michael has been an old god all along. He came from the moon. Yeah, the bloodborne music starts playing. Uh, uh, what is dead may never die, and eternal something something forever lie. I, I fuck. Micah, M- Micah starts with reciting like old classical poems, but then replace, replaces the words for people people with raci- racial slurs. Yeah. Oh, so he is H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Micah, my, Micah's, Micah's introductory monologue is actually just H.P. Lovecraft's book book about freaking killing yourself because your ancestors were black or whatever. The goril- gorilla one. You see, Arthur, there's only two things I fear in this world. Squids and black people. Uh, Hey, Michael, what's the name of your cat? (laughs) Oh, right, I remember something else I did. (laughs) Sorry for coming... For bringing it up on your memory? (laughs) I don't know what... I also named my cat a racial slur. No, I actually... (laughs) It kind of it it kind of did cause <laughs> cause uh I also finished Mortal Alchemist. It it ends. Okay. The reason I remember that is because one of the um the one of one of the protagonists' dog is called specifically Black Hayato. Oh. I don't know why. I don't know why we need to specify that he's he's Black Hayato. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, you, you see, so, it's more of a collection of dogs I have. There's also a white Hayato, uh, Hispanic Hayato. Uh, Asian Hayato. Like, take any anime name of, like, a, a stand or a weapon being called white or black something and just replace it with Hispanic, and it becomes ten times funnier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hispanic Sabbath. <laughs> Hispanic Sabbath. 
<laughs> the Hispanic album by the Beatles. Yeah. That's, that's, that might have been interesting, actually. Metallica really <laughs> declined after the Hispanic album. Yeah. Con- conveniently enough, they did replace their bassist with, uh... Oh, shit. Oh, God. Re- so- Robert Trujillo. Robert Trujillo. After the Black Album, so... That was the Hes- the Hispanic album, I guess. I guess so. But yeah, so the reason I, I wanted to bring up Fullmetal Alchemist again is... Well, for one, the story just kind of ends. You have a, we have a Vero Day now as the, end, as the ending of the, of the last episode, but eh. Also, I just wanted to bring up, because Pink said that he hated, hated the show um, and that he probably watched the 2003 version, which I actually did some research, and turns out the 2003 version not only didn't follow the manga, they actually never supposed to follow the manga. <laughs> the 2003 version just kind of made its own shit up for, after a while. By which, by which I mean best to, like, third episode or so. Shit, that happened quick. So, yeah. Like, if, if Pink disliked, disliked the original series, then he might like Brotherhood. I don't freaking know. Once again, it has a, it has a uh, humor that isn't for everyone, most certainly. But, yeah. That's most, an- most anime does. I mean, the... the I feel like the way I can compare it is like because most anime's humor is, well, it's it's it, it, it's its own thing. To me, Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood's um, humor feel, it feels a bit like um, what you call it, freaking like Police Academy or Leslie Nielsen movies. Oh, but but instead of shit happening in the background, they just happen happen in the fore- foreground randomly. <laughs> hmm. I mean. Pink would probably like that. I mean, Pink, have you watched Police Squad or Airplane or anything with Leslie Nielsen? I think I saw Airplane a long, long time ago when I was a kid, so no, not really. Uh, the Airplane kind of would have been appropriate for inappropriate for a kid. Well, then that's probably not the movie I watched, and I'm thinking of something else. Because there is definitely a scene in Airplane where a naked woman dances in front of the screen for like five seconds for no real reason. Definitely did not see Airplane then. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. I would have remembered that. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So, you guys ready to call it? Yes. Yep. All right. Addy, say bye. Bye. Bye.